Um, the language syntax, we just mentioned that, is a function applied to arguments. The way it works is if I have a function, let's say foo, applies to our arguments a, b, c, whatever, and maybe, maybe this is uh, plus d, e. If I have a function that looks like that, I'm not going to evaluate it because it won't, no, no, this is defined. But what this, the way this works is when the reader here evaluates it, it's actually, as you saw before, calling a function called eval on this thing, which is the primary way that Lisp evaluates things. And you can call eval yourself if you want to evaluate things you create. Uh, but what Lisp is doing here is it looks for the first element in the list. It tries to see if that's a function. If it is, then it applies that function to the rest of the arguments, and it evaluates from left to right those arguments. So the first thing it'll do is look for the value of a, and then it'll look for the value of b, and then it'll look for the value of this thing, which recursively then is looking for the plus function, then looking for the value of d, looking at the value of e, returning that value from this, from applying plus to d and e, to be the value of the third argument here, and then it would call foo with those three arguments. Okay? That's basically the way it goes. Pretty simple. All right? We talked about quoted things. We didn't talk about self-evaluating things. Some things evaluate themselves, like numbers, for example. Um, we notice that some things don't. So, example, if I have that, uh, that symbol, it's going to give me an error because uh, it doesn't evaluate anything. But there is a way to get something that evaluates to itself, which is sometimes useful. If you want a symbol that uh, you don't have to worry about quotes, it's always evaluates the same thing, uses a colon in front of it. Okay? Notice that evaluates to itself didn't need, a, didn't need a, 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 a quote in front of it. The reason why is there's a special package called the keyword package. This is, this is called a keyword. And um, if you just put no package name there, like I didn't, then it knows that's in the keyword package, and the way Lisp works is it evaluates that to itself. Okay? All righty. So, now given the value, the order of evaluation, I think you can probably see that Lisp does prefix calculations. So if I want to do this, and this is a comma, comment, by the way, with a semicolon, um, comments return no value. That's the only thing in Lisp that doesn't return a value, unlike Python, which has an explicit no value that it can return. So if I want, and you have as many as you want, everything to the end of the line is, 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 taken away, is, is ignored. So if I want to evaluate um, 3 times, uh, 3 plus 4 times 7, then obviously that is infix, right? Prefix expression for that would be plus 3, 4, uh, up, 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 star 4, 7. Okay, a pure prefix. If you've had 301, you understand that. We talked about it a bit in 140 as well. In Lisp, we use prefix with the parentheses. Okay, so we use, in this case, we'd have plus 3, star 4, 7. And the way that works is, of course, it finds plus, it finds the value of 3, which is 3, it finds the value of uh, star, which is uh, or multiply, 4, 7, applies multiply to 4, 7 to get 28, and then multiplies it times 3. Okay? So we don't need any sort of precedence relationships in prefix languages like this or postfix languages. And so that's one thing that simplifies the language. On the other hand, some people find prefix expressions annoying, but uh, tough. Now some special forms don't evaluate their arguments. So um, I was trying to think of one that doesn't evaluate its arguments, and I had one yesterday when I was talking to the students, and currently cannot think of one. Um, but some special forms don't evaluate their arguments um, and will return. So for example, well, we'll think of one later. We'll show you when we look at, uh, uh, when, we, when we, oh, I know one that does. In trace functions, we'll show you tracing right now. So let me define a function. We'll take, this is a function that, that would create the cube of something, okay? So foo3 should give me 27, right? So one thing that, that doesn't evaluate its arguments is the function trace. So if I say trace foo, I'm actually lying. It does evaluate its arguments. It looks like it doesn't, so it's a good, a good example anyways. So it tells me it's traced foo, and now if I say foo3, it does this. It says I'm entering foo, foo return 27. Not very spectacular, is it? We'll see an example later when we use that. But notice how we didn't bother. It, it, it looks like it didn't evaluate its arguments. Okay? Um, we'll see later. That that's, that's sort of what it's doing. Okay, to untrace. That's a good thing to have. Take that away. You'll find tracing is quite useful to, to figure out what the heck's going on in Lisp. The debugger is pretty useful, too. So you'll, you'll get facility with it if you make mistakes. Some people do. I mean, you know, I do, but I know you probably don't, but most people do. All right, there is a long-form 
comment in Lisp that's like this, except it doesn't like it at the command line, so never mind. Um, but if I were quit it, there. If I were editing a file, for example, over here, I could do this. It may look pretty, but it's kind of annoying. So most of the time, we just use regular old semicolons. Just like most of the time in Python, you use regular, you use this. Well, Python doesn't, but if you're doing something like uh, C or something like that, you tend to use this a lot rather than that, for example. Same basic difference, okay? All right. Now, we've seen how to create lists, how to create functions, but let's take a look for a moment what a function actually is in Lisp. There's something called lambda forms. Lisp came out of a, a mathematical uh, formalism called lambda calculus uh, that John McCarthy was working on with his advisor, Church. Uh, you probably may have heard of the Church Turing thesis. Well, that's, uh, that's that Church. Uh, so, um, anyways, lambda forms are forms that are used in other languages, even in things like Python. And what they do is, they are anonymous functions, basically. They look like this. So this is a function um, that applies multiply to a and b. So it's basically just a multiply function. You can call these things directly. So for example, and I'm assuming this version of Lisp will do this. We'll see, and we'll try it. It's a nice thing about Lisp, you can try it. Ooh, this version of Lisp doesn't. Uh, cool. All right. So that didn't tell me. Oh, I know what it did. I said something stupid. Okay, so this version of Lisp does. I was going to say it should. I uh, got the princess in the wrong place. Uh, so anyways, here we go. Uh, it's applying this function to these two arguments. Okay, well, most time you don't want to do this, right? So most time you use to fun instead, which is a, a way of defining functions that you have in any language. And we've seen this, and then you call the function. We've seen that up above, just like you would call in any other language. Okay? except without the parentheses, obviously. <laughs> the one place we don't have extra parentheses in Lisp. All right, now, going back to lists for a while, because they're kind of the important thing in Lisp, or one of the important things. If we have a list, let's, let's make a list. Let's set it to something. Then, that's annoying with all this. I know there's a way to get rid of it, I just never bother. Um, there are two functions that are extremely important, car and cutter. For historical reasons, they're called this. And yes, we do pronounce that one cutter. Um, in the original IBM 701, which was what this list was invented for, there were two registers. There was an address register and a data register. And McCarthy, when he was inventing this, said, you know, hey, this is great. We can use these registers uh, by bringing a con cell into the CPU, and we'll store the first pointer in the car in the, I'm sorry, in the address register, and the second pointer in the data register, and then we have access to the new pointer, so we can speed things up. And so if you want to get the first of the list then, you get the contents of the address register and follow that pointer, and if you want to get the second part of the list, the rest of the list, you would get the contents of the data register and follow that pointer. And so over time then, or not very long, the functions to access those are car and cutter. Okay, so here's an example. Um, well, first of all, let's just take an example. If I, want the, if I call car on my function on my uh, uh, list A, which uh, contained in A, which is just the list A, B, C up here, then it should give me the first thing. Yeah, it's the first element. It's what the, what the first pointer in that con cell points to. If I, um, if I call the cutter of that, it should give me the rest of the list, the second pointer. Now, the second pointer here, if we look at this list up here, the first pointer points to A, the second pointer points to the rest of the list or the con cell that contains the rest of the list. So what that means is that the second pointer points to a list, right? A list starting with B, continuing with C. And so if I take the cutter of A, then that should be the list B, C. And if I take the cutter of that, it should be the list C. Okay. If I take the cutter of that, there's nothing, right? So if you look at it, if you remember the box and pointer, the first box, the first pointer, points to the atom C, and the second pointer points to nil, or nothing. And so if I do that, I should get nil, right? By definition, cutter of nil is nil, as is the car of nil. Okay, it's the empty list, okay? Well, what happens if we do this, car of a? Where if I maybe I was trying to do car a, and I didn't really put a quote there. Well, I'm trying to take the first element of, a, of an atom, and list doesn't like that very much. 
and it'll say, tell you A is not a list. Okay. Oops. Let's get rid of that. Um, car and cutter work on dotted pairs as well as you'd expect. A, cutter gives you B. Right. Okay. All right. Now here's some other things we can do. What if we want to take the car of this mess? Well, this car, first element of the list, right? So the first element of this list is this list. And so I return that. What about this one, the cutter of that list? Well, that's everything after the first element or the list consisting of A, B, and D. Okay? And then something like that, the car just gives me that again. And the cutter of this gives me that. Okay? The car of that, we, showed, we saw that a moment ago. Okay? Here sometimes is what you find yourself accessing a list. We want to get a piece of a list and you see something like that. You want the car of the cutter of the car. Okay, well, how do you figure out what you're doing there? Well, you look first at internally this list, and uh, let me just write this list down. Set Q, foo, um, one, two, three, A, B, C. All right, so we first would say, working from inside out, because remember the way list works is it finds the car function and applies it to the result, applies it to the evaluated arguments. So it evaluates this. Well then recursively that evaluates this argument, which recursively evaluates that argument, which is evaluates to itself, take the car of this. So the first thing that happens is we take the car of this list. And so we would take the car of this list, and in that case car of foo is just that list, right? This part right here. That's what gets passed to cutter. Cutter then gets essentially this, right? Now that's going to give me a list, right? It's going to be the rest of the list, 2, 3. And then I'm going to take the car of uh, 2, 2, 3. And so what's going to return from the whole thing is hopefully 2. Okay. All right, now it's tedious enough that they've invented other functions that are composite list access functions, car, well, we don't pronounce that one because it's hard to tell car from car. We do pronounce this one. This is catter. We pronounce some of the others. Um, this one takes the car of the car. And I think you can see the pattern. This takes the car of the car. This takes the car of the cutter. Okay, so here we take the car of the car. The car of this list is 1, 2, 3. The list 1, 2, 3. The car of the list 1, 2, 3 is just 1. Okay? The cutter, which sometimes people pronounce, you sound kind of weird when you do it, is the cutter of the cutter. The cutter of this list is what? Well, you might be tempted to say ABC or something, but it's the list whose first element is AB, uh, the list AB, and the second element is C. So the cutter of that then is going to be the list whose first element is C. Okay? And then cutter of the cutter of this will just give me nil because this is two elements uh, here, and the cutter of the list is the list that contains the list ABC, and the cutter of that is just nothing. Okay? Kadar is another list that we use. That we use. This is the car of the cutter of the car. That just returns two, and then catter takes the car of the cutter. We'll see later. Later, that's very useful. And so the cutter of this is the list whose first element is ABC list, the list ABC, and so that's going to return that as ABC. Okay. Now, if you have to be a wimp about it and don't want to be respect tradition, you can use these other. Uh, I'm joking. You can use these if you want. Um, first and second, in fact, first, second, third, up to tenth are are um, uh, are defined. First is equivalent to car. Second is equivalent to catter. Um, there's also rest, which is the rest of the list equivalent to cutter. Now, there's also nth. If this is zero base, so nth zero list is the same as car. So if I say nth zero uh, foo, it gives me back the first element of foo. Okay. If I say nth uh, three of foo, it gives me back nil. There's not that many things in there. But two should give me back c, for example. And there's also nth cutter, which does the same sort of thing. Nth cutter, uh, zero again of foo will give me the cutter of foo. Does it? No, it, that's not zero base. Sorry, that the zeroth cutter is the list itself. I'm sorry. The first cutter is uh, equivalent to rest, and then the second cutter is equivalent to uh, to cutter of cutter or cutter. Okay. So just to recap, this gives you the list itself. Slight asymmetry, asymmetry there, asymmetry. Hmm, very good. All right, now going back to looking at things that we get uh, that we can access lists uh, with, we have several functions that are called predicate functions. They return true or nil, or rather, more precisely, they return nil or non-nil. And one of these is the member function. 
This will tell us if the first thing you first argument occurs in the second argument. Okay, so obviously the second argument needs to be a list. So if I type member one in this list, then yes, one is one of the elements. So we'd expect it to return true. What it actually returns is one, two, three, and that is it returns the cutter that starts with that element. Why it does that is because very often what you want to do when you are looking for something in the list is you might want to do something with the rest of the list, and so it passes back the rest of the list so you have access to it. Um, this counts as true because anything that's not nil is true. Okay. Um, member one in this should give us back nil as we expect, and obviously member a b and a b in this since that's in there should give us back nil. Hmm. Why would that be? Well. I'm sure you're all answering at this point, those of you sitting at the keyboard uh, looking at this, haven't drifted off to sleep yet. Um, the reason it does this is there are several different kinds of equality in Lisp. The kind that member uses by default is identity. And it turns out this list and this list are not the same. Why not? Well, let's think about it for a second. If I say member, all this, then the first thing Lisp does is it finds the member function, then evaluates this, in order to evaluate this, it builds this list AB internally. Okay? Then it builds this list internally. When it comes across an embedded list, as it's building this list, it builds an embedded list. This then, this con cell is newly created right here. It has no relation to the con cell here at all. And so these two things are in different places in memory, even though they have the same contents and the same structure. And so what member does is it's saying, is this the same as that? No. And so it gives me nil. Okay? So, now if I'd done this, uh, let's say uh, foo, we know what foo is. If I say member foo list a foo, it returns true because this foo and that foo are identical. Okay, what does this give us first of all? Well, it gives us this. Well, I use the mouse there. I never hardly use the mouse in here. That's the list we have. So it included this list as the second element, second uh, the first coder I mean. Okay.